Yeah, of course I have, yeah. They have been a little bit raunchy at times, haven't they, my darling? Well, you know. I love them. Um, okay, so I'm going to introduce you, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, yeah. At the end, I'll say goodbye to you, but stay on. And then okay. I'll stop the recording, and I'll say goodbye properly. Okay. Um, I haven't done any research, so it's just chatty. So, <laughs> I feel time. like it's better that way, personally. Yes! Why wouldn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Right, here we go. <clears throat> Welcome to Stu's Inspirations, episode four. And today I'm joined by a singing sensation. And not only has he got a God-given vocal talent, but he also loves dogs. He's a super nice human being. He is the one and only Mark Rattray. Hi Mark. Hello my, hello, my Stuart. How are you love? I'm all right. God I'm fine. I'm, I'm totally fine but it's bloody freezing isn't it? It's freezing I can't tell you. There's snow here in Coventry. I'm from Coventry in the West Midlands. I'm sorry about that folks. People <laughs> usually get sent here but I can't tell you it's freezing. It is. I, uh, I live. I live in Hastings, which is on the south coast, and we never get snow. It's always balmy and beautiful, but it's snowing, right? Proper snowing today. And I was going to go to London to my salon yesterday, and I had to cancel and turn around and come home. Oh, it's terrible. It is so cold. I mean, I live waterside. I live next, right next to a canal, and it is comedy watching the ducks skate across like Torval and Dean. But at the end of the day, you think to yourself, oh my God, it's so cold, and you can't. And also, Sorry, love. You no, were saying. No, carry on. No, because these days, these days, my paramedic. So this sort of weather is the world's worst weather for us. So not only do people come down with colds and flus and stuff, but they slip and fall over. You know, they're very old. They're very old. And I often think to myself, the very old shouldn't be allowed out of chairs. <laughs> They've got brittle you know bone. I mean? Have most of them got brittle bone? They're very brittle. They're... They they fall over and break. And so then we go and pick them up. And then what we've got to do, we've got to take them into hospital, bless their hearts, where usually they catch a, che uh, ca uh, catch a chest infection. And then they, well, they're not well. That's all I can down. The, the prospect isn't good. Oh, bless them. Well, that's what I was wanting to talk to you about, really, as well, is because yeah. obviously when I first met you, I think it was yeah. about 1996, 97. Wow, was it that long ago, Stuart? My God. Long time um, ago. Yeah, we did we did panto together at Steve. Yeah, so let, let me just tell you a bit. Let me just talk, tell our view or listeners a little bit about you, or you can tell our listeners a bit. No, you, no, you tell you tell you tell them. You've, you've, you 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 remember better. I barely know who you are. <laughs> well, I um, I know that you won Opportunity Knox in 1990. Is that correct? I did love, yeah, I did. And to opportunity but, knocks to younger listeners is a little bit like the X Factor. Is a little bit like the X Factor now, to be fair. Yeah. It was a yeah. massive deal in those days, and you know people were desperate to get on it, and you, it really gave you a great sort of spring platform to um, launch yourself to the world. And then you, you had a great career after that. I did love, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I would kind of disagree with you a tiny bit on X Factor. It's more. It was more like Britain's Got Talent, yes. only because they had uh, they had like jugglers and comedians and various other sort of variety type acts. Really, it was really. Um, and I had a go in nine, I had a go in 1989, and then got nowhere, um, and then uh, and then went back in 1990, and won the whole thing. So it was a very strange year, an amazing year, uh, and then. But you, in those days, you won nothing. You didn't. You didn't win a, a prize. All you won was, you were you were uh, Opportunity Knox winner. You got a, a trophy which Les Dawson called fossilized camel spit, and uh, and then the, the, it wasn't until I did Wogan the following Friday that I that I was offered my first album deal. Wow, that's yeah. incredible! So you didn't oh, actually no. win a prize prize. It was it was. No. But you, did, you did capture like something in the nation, the hearts of the nation, because your voice was beautiful. And at the time, I think Les Mis had just come out and the whole Michael Ball thing was, my dogs are barking, I'm sorry about that. Uh, the whole Michael Ball right. thing was um, was really popular. He was really popular and you've got a similar type yeah. of voice to that. Yeah, no, I know Michael very well. Michael came to see me at the Palladium. Michael and I became firm friends. Um, when I say firm friends, <laughs> Anyway, we'll leave that there. But the thing is, it was we, 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 he's, he's a super, super guy. 
And um, yeah, Les Mis was very popular. The song I sang on Opportunity Locks was Empty Chairs and Empty Tables from Les Mis. And, uh, and so, yeah, the, 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 it, it, it won the nation's heart. But no, in those days, when you watch uh, Britain's Got Talent or uh, X Factor these days, they win £100,000 and a guest spot on the Royal Variety. In those days, you were nothing. You were no, nothing. And it wasn't until say until the following Friday that I was uh, on Wogan. He used to do three shows a week live from the Shepherd's Bush Empire. And I went and did that the following Friday. And it was the next day that I got offered my first sort of big step forward that, that ended up having me uh, a top five album that Christmas. That's amazing. And so... Did it, so once you had the album, you, were then, you then went on to do some musical theatre stuff, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yeah, 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 I did. Did you do so any... I did, I did. No, go on, carry on. No, you carry on, love. <laughs> did you do musicals in the West End and stuff, actually big production musicals, or was it, yeah, was yeah, it yeah. variety shows mostly? No, 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 no. I, 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 I was... Um, <clears throat> I was sang for all the musicals, so, I mean, and... Um, so which ones did which ones did, in the end did I do? I was well. I know you did magic had... musicals because I did magic the musicals the year after you. Weirdly enough, you did magic the musicals with Marty Webb, didn't you? The yes, lovely Marty Webb. Uh, and I and I can't remember. I don't know who your was it. Paul Robinson, Alison Pollard. That lot yes, of oh God, look at you. So yes, yeah, so Paul Robinson, Alison Pollard, Mitch Sebastian, Mitch. Uh, Ian McKen. Ian Mackenzie Stewart, Lucy yeah. Florentine, um, uh, Linda May Brewer, were yeah. all backing singer dancers that that, that uh, we toured with. Then in the on the following four or five years, I mean, well, that, I took, that it after was... you, after you'd finished that, I then took yeah. over from one of those dancers. So I did it with Mark Rattray and and uh, Marty. You know, you didn't do it with me, darling, did you? No, I did it with not Mark Rattray. What are you talking about? Um, I did it with Dave Willits. And Marty, oh. that yeah, <laughs> I wish it was with you. Oh. Can you imagine how much fun we would have had. God, it too much fun, really. I mean, it was it was funny enough. <laughs> it would have been it would have been ridiculous if it had been me and you. Oh my, oh my god, god. Stuart. I, I mean, it, no, it was it was the one. It was the best time, and uh, you know, I then went out and covered Phantom in um, Toronto for a while. I did a little something with Elaine Page called the. Um, the stage and the silver screen, which we toured, sang at Buckingham Palace um, that Christmas, the following Christmas after the first Royal Variety. That's uh, amazing. I know it was bonkers. It so was it was bonkers. a real wealth. It was an re- amazing career, and it still is. So you still you still tread the boards, don't you? You still do it? No, not really. I mean, these days, I'm. A, uh, um, your listeners may know me. If you've been watching or listening, or, yeah, no, watching uh, on More Four every Sunday night for the past, uh, we did not last night, but the one before, and we're on this coming Sunday, nine 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 on the front line. I'm a paramedic these days. I know. And so it's a very very how, different ball game. What made you do this? So how did talk me through that transition? So you've got you've won opportunity knocks. You've got this massive career. Yes. It's all going brilliant. Yeah. I know uh, you've got Tracy and, and and the dogs, which we'll talk about in a second. But how yeah. the hell did you go from that to a paramedic? I'd been in the business for about twenty years, and I, I and I kind of ticked the boxes that I'd wanted to, to tick. Um, they were they you know I'd done the musicals I'd wanted to be in. I'd, I'd there were nine albums, sang it. Booking the Palace, sang at the White House, sang around the world. Um, and then I just, I'd had, I kind of had enough. And then I thought to myself, at the time, I'd got an, a young daughter I wasn't seeing very much of. And I thought, no, I need to get home. I need to, uh, I need to uh, th- th- concentrate and maybe get myself a pension and do a proper job. So I, I came back and I was a 47 year old. At university, the oldest student in town, uh, training to to get my paramedic stu- well paramedic degree. So that's what I did. I went I went to to uni and uh, and decided that's what I wanted to do. I was always before I went opportunity to Knox, I was a nurse for ten years. Yeah. So I was always in the NHS. I was always a carer. 
so it was just that really. I just thought I need to go back and do what I know I'm good at, you know. So um, so these days I'm the, um, yeah, the so singing paramedic. It's crazy though, because there's lots of paramedics out there and obviously none of them are good, half as good as you, but no, 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 <laughs> fame seems to just follow you around like this 999 on the front line has happened and it's you and it's like yeah. two shots it's almost like you're meant to be on screen it's, it's, I, know, I know but it's very much like that friends episode too you'll love this it's very much like that friends episode when i knew you i was so much younger and so much slimmer and when i watched the the rush the rushes of of 999 on the front line and you look at it and you think oh my god i mean i've got a big screen and I take, I take up an awful lot of that fucking screen, sweetheart. And somebody says to me, my mum says, oh, don't worry, love. It's, it's, it's like that friend thing. You know, where, uh, the camera puts £10 on you. Yeah, but how many cameras were on me? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was like, oh, my God, I look fucking yowge. You look but, fabulous. What are you talking about? You look amazing. And also, the, not being funny, but a big talent demands a big screen presence a big screen presence i don't want to see anything except my face on the screen sweetheart and there i am taking up almost 98 percent of it <laughs> um, oh what, do you do? God. what do you do but no so yes yeah, so, so, so i moved from doing doing that for so many years 20 years which was a real roller coaster of a ride to then uh to then becoming becoming a paramedic and I have to say it's probably the best thing I've ever done because I think I was always meant, I think I was always meant to be in healthcare, really. I just happened to have the, a, a, a singing voice. That's, that's all. But it's, um, it's, cool. it's lovely that you can do two jobs that you loved. Like you love singing yeah. and you love healthcare, you love caring for people. So it's great that the two can come together. It's a bit like me with the dogs. I, I love performing. I still do it. But yeah, I, know. Also, I also love dogs so i can work yeah. with both Hurrah. i know i've been keeping up on on all the on all the things you've been doing and all the pictures and all of you in the in the various productions and thinking look at him still treading the boards after all these years sweet up and but then also massively massively proud of what you've been doing with the dogs oh. and, and and you know being a, a huge hugely recognized and respected groomer of dogs and you know it's i think it's amazing mate well, it's Good such an, I think it's such an under acknowledged industry and I, I, I'm always fighting to get it to get people to understand that it's really skilled. It's not just something they can do at home. And I'm really passionate about it because I just the amount of things that we see as groomers that are that are, aren't welfare. It's not good. It's like people yeah. realize that, you know, they can. I've seen dogs with cuts down their skin from where people have tried to cut mats out because they're embarrassed about taking it to the groomers then they don't know where the mat stops and the skin starts. So it's just horrible. And you can't, you know, dogs can't tell you. So for me, it's all about trying to make sure that everyone's responsible as dog owners. And that's why I try, I'm like I'm trying to be the voice for the dog. But yeah, always, I, I, I know you've love always them. loved dogs. Always. And we, I know that, um, so you, you're married to Tracy or you were married to Tracy? What's the... I was married to Tracy. I've been, I've been gay all my life. So I only ever met one, um, W woman who I ever fell in love with and she happened to be Tracy and I um, and can I just say that I also fell in love with her <laughs> I know uh, I love she her. Loves, and she, I spoke to her this morning saying I was going to be speaking to you she also loves you very very much yeah, we're still great amazing. mates still great mates um yeah. and uh but yeah five years ago I thought well we've been married for 32 years Stuart mm -hmm. um and I just thought hang on a second it was just I had to be honest to myself and to, um, you know, and, and, and to her too. And, and to the fact we, we, we've got a 20 year old, well, almost 20 year old little girl together. Uh, so, so it was, it, it was, it was just a case of thinking, yeah, I need to be honest and need to be myself. So I came out about five years ago properly. Um, and then um, I've been single ever since, but having living in my own space, Still great friends with Trace, still obviously dad to the most amazing little girl in the world. And um, and yeah, they were both over yesterday. Is uh, your daughter in America? Or she, no, she's back from America. So I know she went to America for a little she's while. She's back from America. Well, she's not allowed to be in America at the moment. She's cool. just been, she was offered a, a head of performing arts at Camp America. So um, she's, she's, a, she's a, an amazing, talented little thing.
So yeah. she's taking after her. Well, dad. She's well. I don't know. I don't think. I think. I, it's like I often say to her. I said, I think you'll find Coventry singing in sensation BBC television in Oxford in 1990. <laughs> Coronavirus survivor 2020. 999 on the front line. Channel four. That post has been taken, sweetheart. Move on. Move along. Do the best sweetheart. you can. Good luck. With that. Good luck. Good luck with that, sweetheart. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I've always loved dogs. We've and we Trey, Trace and I have always had dogs. We've always been we've always had bulldogs. Uh, we're massive, massive bulldog fans. I remember Chubbs. Um, I met Chubbs. I know you did. Do you, do you remember Chubbs? Oh, bless him. Uh, that was so many years ago. Chubbs died the year Liv was born. So that was 20 years ago we lost Chubbs. Yeah. Um, but he was he was our first ever bulldog. And I can't tell you the embarrassment of sitting in a vet's waiting room and um, the vet coming out and saying, oh, Chubbs Rattray, looking at me. I'm saying it's the dog. <laughs> rude. You know, it, rude. Harsh. Correct. <laughs> but how rude. Anyway, um, so, yeah. Um, so from Chubbs, who was very much my dog, we then moved on to a, a, a Frenchie, who was very much Tracy's dog. But... He was a big Frenchie. He was a very, very big. I don't because Frenchies are a certain size, aren't they? And, and he he was a big Frenchie, and he was very much a mum's dog. He was very much Tracy. And now the girls uh, have got Bruce, Bruce, who is a very tiny French bulldog. He's absolutely tiny and completely fucking bonkers. Um, I think he's. I think he's. I think he needs a mental health assessment. I, I, I'm not sure whether he's not sort of ADHD or something. Do you know what I mean? Oh, um, but he is gorgeous, but um, but not the full ticket. Well, bless him. And so, do you, did you ever have any problems with all of the bulldogs and the Frenchies and that you've had in your time? With yeah, because they're brachycephalic, which means short nose. So, do you yeah. ever have problems with that at all? No. Do you know the funny thing is we never did. We never did. We never had the breathing problems. I mean, Chubbs died naturally. He died of old age. Uh, Pablo, um, he we had to have Pablo put put down a couple, um, a few years ago um, because he lost all he lost um, all, all all feeling in his back legs, and uh, we had to have an operation, and he had like a laminectomy to try, and then we we fought over the next eight months to try and get him to walk again or try and get him to feel better. He never did. So he, in the end, had to be put to sleep, which broke our hearts. Um, he, because he was a gorgeous dog. Um, but no, the funny thing is, of course, they're, they're very snuffly, aren't they? You know, you know, because you look after these dogs. Yeah. They're very snuffly. You know, but they are gorgeous. And uh, but no, the, as far as we're concerned, we've never had any problems as far as the breathing has has happened. Really luckily, I know that because I know that they sometimes. A lot of them are bred to get the shorter the, the shorter the nose, the more attractive they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. And you know, sometimes you think to yourself, I mean, they do look beautiful, but you think to yourself, at what price? Yeah, exactly. um, that they can't that they can't breathe, and that's not great. But no, I've got to be honest. My my our three have been um, have been able to breathe. They've been oh, fine. We've had some in the salon before. Where it's been warm in the salon, we've got aircon in our salons, so it's fine. But if if it wasn't aircon, I'm sure that the heat yeah. would have got to some of them because I just think they can't. The way that a dog can't, uh, cools itself down isn't through sweating; it pants, and that's why they yeah. pant, the, 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 that expels the hot air. And they I mean they sweat a little bit through yeah. the pads, but not much. Yeah. That's how they cool themselves down. If they can't regulate the temperature, so the longer the nose of the dog, the more efficient their cooling system is, and that's why they have trouble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, I, I do get that. And, uh, you know, we've been all, we've always been very conscious. And also the fact that both uh, Pap, uh, Chubbs and Pablo are white. So they, they really shouldn't sit in the sun no. because they, 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 you know, they used to just absorb the heat and stuff. And, but they, Chubbs was a, a sun lover. You couldn't get him out of the garden. And Pablo used to quite like it as well. Yeah. So you'd think you'd look at them sometimes and, like, <laughs> and you'd think, oh my God, they look so uncomfortable, but you couldn't get them out. I mean, he it. just loved, they loved it. Yeah. Get really good spray, pet safe, um, sun, sun tan spray now. It's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. 
definitely, yeah. Well, and when, we you did. Go, when you go to people's houses, and obviously as a paramedic, you have to be you're faced with the most awful, dramatic situations. Uh, have you ever had a problem with a dog being there? Well, and- they all they they all say that. So so whenever um whenever uh, we we uh we have a call to nine nine nine, they always say if you've got a dog. In fact, they always say if you've got any pets. Can you please put them in the other room so that the paramedics can concentrate on what they're hit there for? But if I hear something barking in the background, I all I'm, both Callum and I, Callum's my crewmate. Check him out, by the way, on as I say, catch up on more for check 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 us both out. You'll love Callum, he's a sweetie. Yeah. Um, we're both dog people. We love dogs. So if we hear that there's a dog in the other room, we'll we'll always say, What sort of dog have you got? And they'll say, whatever. And and they will always say, oh, you can't you can let them out. We don't mind. We, we're some a lot of paramedics don't like dogs or they're frightened or what have you. Um, but I but we always say, oh, it's OK. You can let them out. They're fine. You know, and we always you you, you, you meet some gorgeous dogs as well. On some of the jobs. I bet. So I'm sure because I think if it was me and I was in a predicament, let's say, and I had to put my dog away. It, if you came in and you said, oh, what sort of dog have you got? I think that whole chat might calm me down a bit because it takes your mind off what's happening and you can yeah. start concentrating on something else. I should imagine that's something a lot to do with it. Yeah, of course. And, you know, it's always it's always good to be it's always good to be honest. And we you know, we 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 are both Cal and I big dog lovers. So if they you know, if they say uh, the dogs are in the kitchen, and we ask oh, what, what what sort of dogs are they and then they come out and join us you know you can physically see the owner relax and uh, sometimes sometimes some of the things we get called out for like abdominal pain shortness of breath chest pain you can see them sort of being kind of distracted a little bit and so it's good involve involve the whole family and that of course includes the dogs yeah absolutely 100 percent. it doesn't that more now these days i'd say than it did 20 or 30 years ago because I remember growing I was saying to someone else uh, I remember growing up and and pets pet dogs weren't classed as part of the family like they are now it's totally no. it's really yeah definitely moved on a little bit I think absolutely I mean if you you know I mean ev- everybody just about everybody these days has got some sort of pet you're either a cat lover or you're a dog lover and uh, and, and also some strange people who do reptiles but we'll leave that well aside and uh but no we we i've always been a dog lover and it's it, whenever i see there's a dog in someone's house we always we always make a fuss oh, i love that that's brilliant i wish i hope well hopefully most people are like that but you never know do you some people i mean some people step uh, would rather be faced with an on- oncoming traffic than my big poodle like literally right. well literally like Ugh! It's Mind you, your big poodle. The thing is with poodles that most people know, or don't know rather, is that poodles are massively intelligent. Yeah, they're a very, very intelligent dog. So I've I've, I've been looking at your pictures with you and your poodle, and uh, he's a he's a he's a big beauty, isn't he? Or she? No, it's a boy. His name's Ralph. He's big massive, boy. and he's, he, uh, he's a big boy. It's like having a child in a dog costume. That's yeah. Even the way he's, they're so bright, Stuart, aren't they? That's the thing. But the second most he, 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 he'll know he'll know you, he'll know he'll he'll feel your emotions, and he 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 reacts to that. And and he, you know, it's they're, they're very intelligent dogs, poodles. Yeah, well, um, is it, is it, if me and James have a row, not that if that ever happens, because obviously my life is just roses. <laughs> we never roses act. and chocolate. Roses and chocolates. Roses and enough. chocolates, darling. If we have a row, uh, Ralph's literally like, "Oh my God, what's happening? This isn't right!" And he runs up. What's with mum and dad? He doesn't like it. Yeah. Oh, we won't be able to cope with it. He won't be able to cope with it. It's very much like, oh, "What's going on with mum and dad? What on earth is going on here?" Yeah, that's he won't be able to cope with it because so, as I say, they're so bright. Yeah, they, they are. pick they pick stuff up so easily. And I know that you had COVID earlier on in the year, didn't you? Because I think we had it at a similar time, actually. I think you I had did. it before me. I had mine on, in my I didn't give it to you. And you didn't, I didn't give it to you and you didn't give it to me. Let's we just might, clear that up straight away. So we you know. might have done down the uh, mean, net. Down the net, I know. Well, I, I remember catching that chlamydia once, but that's a whole different blog. Um, yeah, the but no, um, I did. I, I did. I had it um, 
I had it. Uh, I didn't have any. I didn't have any um, uh, symptoms except I lost my sense of smell and taste, which to me is a fucking huge problem. Let me tell you, um, there was no coughing. There was no. Um, there was no uh, feeling poorly or feverish or anything like that until the second week, and then it was like a like a tsunami hit oh. me, and I was. For the following two weeks, I was really poorly. Mm. And had I had I really and truly, I should have possibly gone into hospital because if I lay flat, I couldn't breathe. So, but then what happened was it was funny. I phoned my friend Zoe. I don't know if you do you remember Zoe Tyler? Yes. Zo yeah. So Zoe Zoe's a um, she was on the uh, audition. She was on the uh, the, the, the the judging panel for. How do you solve a problem like Maria and the Joseph thing? She she did she did loads she did loads of telling, um, and she was in loads of West End, but she's now known she's now a vocal coach lives in Orlando America, and uh, she phoned me saying how are you, and I was like I'm feeling shite I'm really not feeling well at all, and she said to me have you been doing any breathing exercises have you been doing doing any singing exercises, and I just, I just thought to myself. No, no, I haven't even thought of it. I can't breathe. And she said, Mark, you were a singer for 20 years. You've got a massive diaphragm. Let me send you some stuff over and then try that. And see. I couldn't believe it. After about two days, I felt like I turned a corner. Wow, that's incredible. I just, I just started singing again. And because of it, and they, they do now suggest if you enjoy a bit of singing to COVID because COVID is entirely a respiratory problem. That's where it begins and ends. It doesn't go any, anywhere else. It kills you through the lungs. It's yeah. all about your breathing. So um, I started to do my vocal exercises and suddenly I, I started to feel better. So it I was like, I was so thankful for, to Zoe. Um, and yeah, so, but yeah, I was, I was, I was off all in all about three weeks. That's amazing. I never even thought of that. I did when I had it. I didn't have any problems breathing. I didn't have a cough. I just had a really high temperature and the most awful headache, right? Imaginable. I, I didn't lose my taste, my taste or smell, and I ate the whole way through it. But I couldn't get out of bed because I had flu-like symptoms. That that was all yeah. really wrong with me. But um, yes, I mean, of course, if you've got if you use your diaphragm properly, then you and you know how to breathe, then of course it would help. It, and it did. It helped enormously, you know. So, um, so I was very grateful for her for that. And uh, and yeah, it, it got it got me to turn a corner and, and get back to work. Basically, Are you finding it really sort of stressful still with the whole COVID thing. I I I think I've, got, I've the, the awful thing, the horrible thing is, is I do believe I've been left with long COVID. So because oh. only because I'm I'm, my, I'm more breathless than I've ever been. I'm, I get tired a lot, but then I'm nearly 60 and I am clinically obese. So uh, these things do, you know, these things do affect you. Um, and uh, I'm an old boy these days, you know, and and, and so, but having said that, I, I firmly believe that COVID hasn't helped. Um, and as far as us working with COVID, yeah, unfortunately, people still don't believe that, it, that, that some, some people still don't believe it's, it even happens. But I, so, can, yeah. I, I can go to like the shop, supermarket, yeah. and I obviously I wear my mask, you know, I'm and I try and be respectful of people's distance and everything else. But I can't tell you how angry I get when I see people not doing that. And I don't work in healthcare, so and my sister does. My sister's a, a nurse, and and and, uh, and I respect her greatly. I just can't understand how you must feel. It must drive you, knowing that you have to go to these people's houses and try and save people's lives, and you, then you go to the supermarket and someone's not wearing a mask or not doing the the proper procedures. It must. I don't or know. Not, or, or you know, or you're keeping your distance, or trying to keep. My thing is trying to keep your distance from people, and then you know someone will lean across you to reach for some cheese, and you're like, what 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 are you doing? You know, we're supposed to be two meters apart why, why are you sitting on my fucking shoulder yeah you know you know stop it people don't take it seriously your uh facebook posts by the way Stuart, always crap your your train observations crack me up they crack me up you know you're sitting opposite somebody who's eating like a fucking camel 
or uh, is, is or is talking really loudly on their mobile i roar with laughter i i always think to myself i can see stuart sitting there looking at this <laughs> looking at this person thinking shut the fuck up you're driving me banana the worst one that i had was the the uh, guy that had three bottles pints of milk on the the, the ledge thing of, on the train and all three of them fell on top of me <laughs> like <laughs> God's sake! And there was the man doing the yoga. I, honestly, I just can't understand. You couldn't write it. Honestly. You couldn't write it enough. You couldn't. You absolutely, they should do a series about it. I think so. I think you should. I think you should. <laughs> just hysterical. Hysterical. I just, I just can't understand. And yet people still, if I get on with Ralph, who's a very good boy, and what, when, you know, he won't sit on the chair or anything like that, he'll always get out of the way. People are like, oh, there's a dog. And I've had people scream and run off the train. And I'm like, oh, please, come on. That man's eating, yeah. like, like you say, a camel. That's the person you should be worried about, not me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when, going back to uh, Panto, when we did Panto together? Because So we did Stevenage, didn't we? We did Stevenage Panto. We did. And it had we did. Kate, Kate O'Mara, God rest her soul. Like, just love I know. I still can't believe Kate's gone. I mean, she, she, she was... She was so vibrant, wasn't she? I mean, she was so much fun. And, uh, yeah. So who else, was in that? who else was in ours? It was me and you. The two yeah. Kids, Kate O'Mara. Chris yeah. Wren, he died. Who? Chris Wren, he directed it. Chris Wren, yeah. Um, Vanessa Clark. He died, he died then, did he? Yeah. Uh, Vanessa oh. Clark. Actually, he didn't, yeah. die, he didn't die long after the panto. Really? Yeah, because he... I think he got HIV, and in those days it was still a bit touch and go. And so, yeah, that happened. Um, who else was there? Kate who was the gorgeous? Who was the gorgeous prince that was pissed all the time? Oh, Nick Ferranti. Nick Ferranti. Oh my god! I mean, he was beautiful to look at, but fuck, Fun. it was a nightmare. Oh god, he was so bad. And Lucy Morgan, who I'm still really close with. <laughs> Lucy Morgan. Oh my god, she's so gorgeous. I mean, we just laughed us. We laughed our way through that, didn't we? And of course, your gorgeous friend Craig. Um, Craig, yes. Who we who we miss to this day. He, adored, a, he absolutely adored the bones of you. Like he was. I know. Man. I know, and I loved him too. I loved him too, and we were so close. And uh, I, I just, I, he he came to see me in a show like a. Um, I went on tour shortly after the panto and he came to see me down in Fairham and it was so good to see him again. And uh, it wasn't until some years later, I was re I was rehearsing uh, at the dance attic, I think. And you and I bumped into each other and you, I don't know whether you were doing, you were doing Mamma Mia or something. I don't, I can't remember, but you told me then that Craig had passed away and I, it took, the wind out of my sails. Oh, it was awful. It was, it was just he was just, he was just such a gorgeous lad. He was so such a gorgeous lad. The worst thing about it was for me, because he was my best friend, and I didn't, we, we, as we sort of grew up, and I was busy working in London and doing lots and lots of shows and stuff, and he was producing, he worked for Clear Channel for a while, and our paths sort of went in different directions. We always stayed in touch, but not as close as we were. And then yeah. we sort of came back together. As life goes. Exactly. And yeah. we were always still in touch, but he came into the, my, I was working in a box office in Leicester Square because I used to do that half price ticket agency thing in between jobs. Bad. And he came in yeah. and he couldn't remember how to get from Leicester Square to Covent Garden. And I was like, Craig, this isn't right. You need to go. And it was a brain tumour. And he was terrified because he couldn't remember the journey. It was just so, so sad. And he was so and incredibly brave. Oh God! And did it did it did it take him quite quickly? It was a good. I say it was a year. He had he had uh, lots of treatments, and, and then he told us that he was in remission, which he was. But he secretly knew it had come back and didn't really tell anyone. And he had his thirtieth birthday party and died about two weeks after that. Oh, I can't bear it! It's just yeah. it's just unbearable. He was so gorgeous, and I loved him so much. Um, and so yeah. Yeah, he was. It was. He was. We love. We, we, we love. We love you, Craig. We oh, love you, Craig. Will. Yeah, but the, with the panto. But going back to the panto, do you remember? Um, Lucy used to have to die. Obviously, not die, but she pricked her finger because oh. it was Sleeping Beauty, and then she'd go to sleep. And at the opening of Act Two, we'd have to sing uh, this "Wake Up, 
beautiful princess and we'd have to get these petals these paper petals and i know exactly what you're gonna say we used to sprinkle them over her and be like wake up princess blah 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 and we could towards the end of the run we couldn't find any petals no one was cutting them out so we would go around the, the corridors and scrape them <laughs> from the floor <laughs> that where they've been dropped and all in, Lucy, in they were just covered in dirt and lucy used to lay <laughs> pretending to be and we'd literally just be shoving dust and dirt dirty filthy donna kebab wraps all sorts all over her. You know, I mean, who knew? And at the end of the... No wonder she fucking woke up in the end. If only to clean herself off or dust herself down. I'll never forget you Vanessa. Know, or, 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 to, or, to get, or to get Nick Franti out the bar. It was a <laughs> terrible... You know, it was just like, oh, my God. I yeah. remember Vanessa had the first line after that song and after us doing that, and all of us were absolutely pissing ourselves and she couldn't get the word she couldn't get the line out oh it was so much fun and, oh. and so, vanessa was gorgeous as well wasn't she oh my god she was so touch. much fun i'm still in touch with vanessa she's just gorgeous are she? you please please do give her my love won't you when you speak to her i'll make her listen to this i'll send her okay a oh um, she was gorgeous i love vanessa it's funny though because i remember this panto was before people had mobile phones as well we didn't they weren't really out because I, no. bought, I bought a pager. Oh my God, did you? I had a pager. It was a brand new thing. And I was all excited. And at one point I used to have to open, I used to have to stand in a wardrobe and open the wardrobe doors for Kate O'Mara to come prancing out of it. And I used to take my pager with me and put it down my tights because I was obviously a dancer in this panto. Mm. Put it down my tights and then... Vanessa... Mind you, this was before he even got to the theatre, people. He used to wear tights and then his jeans. But that's a whole different Jeremy Kyle. Carry on with the story, love. I used to put it down my tights and Vanessa and Lucy used to go to the phone box and phone my pager. So <laughs> to get... To, to, that, there's two there's two things that's hysterical there one they had to go to the phone box i mean what the fuck and then also that they would phone you to give you some vibration around the old uh diggy doo la by the stuart simons exactly yeah. do you remember, do you remember you? the name the name was called johnny dallas oh he was fucking vile oh he hated me do you he remember? hated you with a vengeance i don't know why and he really out of all the dames i'm, I'm sure he must be dead by now I mean, she was 98 then, wasn't she, really? And she was, you know, I mean, she was, she was just, she, she kept herself to herself and um, I used to be really the, wasn't that funny. I used to be in the green room and if I was in there and he came in, he would walk straight back out again. I have no idea what I did to upset him, but he didn't yeah. like it. You were just a bit camp. I wasn't as camp in those days, you see, so he could tolerate me. Yeah, but um, it, 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 he just, he just wasn't, he just wasn't really a company player, was he? He didn't, he didn't really want to. It almost felt like he didn't. I think Chris Wren got him the, the job um, with Kevin Wood, and he just wasn't that great. He yeah. just wasn't that funny. Nanny, he, fanny, cranny. Mm. Sing a song called "Thank God for Kids." <laughs> Thank God for kids. I know he couldn't fucking bear kids either, could he? No, oh, he hated everyone. He, he hated not. every fucking one. It was just awful. I did yeah. a panto a couple of years later in Hull, and uh, we did a grab bag. Actually, I did it with Maureen Nolan. I know you're friends with Nolan, aren't you? Well, I'm very good friends with them. Well, their I family really. Literally love Mono. Mono is. Li yeah. I just adored her. I literally I latched onto her, and we did panto together, and. Yeah. We had a, I can't remember what the dame's name was, but we, he got me in the great, you know, the grab bag, the Christmas grab bag where you take someone's name out and you, yep. he got me and he bought me, he bought me a, a tube of toothpaste. <laughs> Fuck off. Are you being serious? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he bought you a tube of toothpaste. I was so offended. <laughs> was so offended. I was like... Somebody who's, somebody who's got the most amazing teeth and the most amazing smile in the world bought you a tube of toothpaste. He bought me a tube of toothpaste. He hated me. I've, I think dames just hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because you're funnier than they are, sweetheart. That's why. Maybe. That's one of the things. Well, I'm going to speak to Maureen later. I'm going to speak to Maureen tonight because I'm so... I always... Um, I always... I speak to the girls at least three times a week. So 
So I'm going to um, I'm going to speak to my later. So I'm going to send her your love. Oh, please do because I absolutely adore the woman. I adore the Bones fan. I watch anything she's on. I'll always watch. I went to see her in Blood Brothers. Actually, and I thought she was amazing. I think she's brilliant. Oh, well, I did. I saw her at some time. So she says, "Oh, you'll have to go." I said, oh, "I'm not watching it again, sweetheart. That tired old fucking performance. I've seen, I've seen it so often by now. I'm, you know, they they die. They both fucking die. It's like oh, why? What are you going to do? I've got to sit through all that. Tell me, it's not. No, I've I've done it. I've been there and done it, sweetheart. I can't do it anymore. I've sat there so often. You know, I really can't do it anymore. They've all been in it. I know. They've got. There's a Guinness Book of Records thing on their on on their wall that it's the one uh, um, role, Mrs. Johnston, that's been played by the most sisters. That's amazing. Even, I think two of the brothers have even played it. I know. I. You know, they've all played it. If you if you're a Nolan, you've got to have been in Blood Brothers. They're bloody brilliant at it, though, aren't they? They're really good at it. Oh yeah. I, mean, I, oh, I, yeah. Yeah. I went to see it in um, Hastings last year when we were still allowed to go to the theatre, and because yeah. uh, my friend was playing the narrator, and yeah. Lynn Paul was playing yeah. Johnson. Now Lynn Paul is adore. She's a great performer. Don't get me wrong, but mm. she is about ninety eight years old. So when she's doing that. <laughs> She's on casters. She's on casters. <laughs> they push they they push her out and then they pull her back in. She's a little bit, you know, I mean she she's lovely, but don't get her to bend down because she'll never fucking stand up again, sweetheart. She's, osteo she's osteoarthritic. <laughs> she's osteoporotic. She may as well truly in, you know, when she stands there, when I was a youngster, I was 18. You're yeah, fucking in your distant memory, darling. Seriously. I'm not being funny. <laughs> You know, she was in the New Seekers back in 1873. No, I mean, credit no, she is gorgeous. Okay. I do think to myself, God, how does she do it? Because even now, if I get a part, a big part in a show, learning those lines, I'm like, it's getting, it gets harder and harder. I know. Well, I'll say I know. I recently did Into the Woods. I, 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 I was, uh, I produced. I was one of the um, four producers that did Into the Woods back at the Belgrade um, a few years ago. Um, because I always wanted to play the part of the baker and during the time I was in show business it never came up and I thought to myself no um, I will I'll actually invest some money in this and see what happens and we sold out for the whole week thankfully and made all our money back it was a massively expensive production and all the costumes for example were RSC uh, and but it was just so amazing to, uh, to to do it again I haven't I haven't, I haven't sang in such a long time um, so I can't remember where I'm going with this. Well, into the woods. Old, Alzheimer's doesn't suit everyone, sweetheart, does it? I think it was into the woods because learning that part, I'd love to play the baker too. It's like my, yes. my dream role. And yeah. uh, I just think that just you've just it's a different muscle. And if you don't if you don't work that memory muscle memory, it, you lose it. Just like yes, I'm about it, sweetheart. <laughs> I mean the, the, it was <laughs> yeah, there's been many muscles that haven't been worked in a little while, sweetheart, that I'm losing the the will to live and but the thing is as far as uh, as far as yeah uh, the thing is with Sondheim it's so wordy and Into the Woods is so convoluted and so structured and hard that um that I just adored learning it all um I, we had a great cast and uh I was so glad it went as well as it did well, I'm so pleased I wish I'd been to see it I'd love to have come to see it I did see I saw oh. it on Facebook I thought it looked amazing it looked fabulous we Oh, thank you. Well, thank I think you. that wraps well, up. Thank you so well, much. Wraps up. Thank you for chatting to me, Mark. Oh, Stuart, it's been too long, my love. It's been so long. Yeah. And it's been so gorgeous. I watch you from afar with great pride. Well, we need a little, and, uh, I think we need a little 25 year reunion, don't we, with the girls and boys of Toronto? Yeah. Is Nick Ferranti, well, half of them aren't alive, but <laughs> is Nick Ferranti, so which bar are we going to meet him in? God knows. He'll be in Hampstead Heath somewhere, sniffing about. He will be. <laughs> He speaks well, well of you. <laughs> of course he does. Thank you, why wouldn't you? I'll see you. Right. I'll see you again, Sue. I love you lots. Mwah. Thank you. Love you too. Take care, my love. Bye, Bye darling.